Greetings, unsettled souls, and welcome to The Correct Views. Sam I. B. DeGangi reporting for The Media Speaks. Uh, make sure you go to TheMediaSpeaks.com. Um, it's here, guys. Part two of two of the um, now monthly massive Fukushima updates that the, uh, the show does now. Um, if you're new to the show, hit subscribe. I do Fukushima stuff all month long. And then a lot of my other news is very libertarian based. Uh, everything from police abuse to uh, war, uh, nuclear weaponry, you name it. Uh, many, many libertarian uh, views espoused here. But um, I, I, don't know, I don't know how I ended up being into radioactivity. I guess when I was, uh, when I was a child, um, I saw Silkwood. Uh, Ozzy Osbourne's The Ultimate Sin. I, I This was very frightening to me that this, something like this could exist. And everything I'd ever worried about all seems to have happened. Uh, not once, no, twice, three, four times at Fukushima on four different reactors. And I've followed it since day one. So I'm going to stick with it, guys. I, be I believe in what Chris Busby said. This is the worst disaster in all of recorded history. And before we get started, I want to thank Melissa Melton at Truth Stream Media um, for not only being a wonderful source of news, but for uh, allowing me to post this link on her site. If you are you seeing this show, one of the reasons you may be seeing it is because of her. So please make sure you go to Truth Stream Media. All right, friends, we're going to get into it. Um, NaturalNews.com, Jonathan Benson. After sickening U.S. Navy sailors in 2011, radioactive stream continues to build from Fukushima reactor. Um, and this was my lead-off story yesterday, but I didn't know that uh, Mr. Benson was going to post an article on it today. So I've also made it my lead-off story today. No, the entire show is not going to be a repeat of yesterday. But I needed to bring this in because... This, this brings you a few facts that I didn't know before. And the more I read this, the angrier I became. And that's probably going to be your reaction. It was recently unveiled that the U.S. Navy sailors aboard the USS Ronald Reagan during the time of the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear disaster suffered severe radiation poisoning after being left out to sea for months without aid. A, and now, a new reports indicate that the cause of the nightmarish situation for these unfortunate sailors, radioactive steam from the melted reactor cores of Fukushima, is still billowing from the stricken plant some three years later. Navy sailor Lindsay Cooper, 24, recently shared the horrific events of the time with the New York Post, which just before Christmas broke the story publicly. It was a brisk day in March, just days after Fukushima was stricken by a tsunami that resulted in three of the six reactor cores literally melting into the earth. That is a melt through, by the way, friends, not a melt down. When Cooper and her colleagues got their first taste of what happens as a result of radiation exposure. Now, this is going to be a repeat of what I said yesterday. Just stay with me. There's a reason for this, because it's grimmer than you thought. Um, shout out to Tim for Grimmer. I was standing on the flight deck and we felt this warm gust of air and suddenly it was snowing, recalled Cooper to the New York Post, explaining how at the time nobody knew what to make of the situation. We joked about it. Hey, it's radioactive snow. I took pictures and video. Well, it says the, the jokes quickly stopped after Navy crew members began falling ill. As it turns out, the ship had been drifting in radioactive water for several days prior to being engulfed in what would later be identified as a cloud of radioactive steam from Fukushima. So it wasn't even natural snow as was originally reported, but it gets worse. According to reports, the ship's desolinization system had been quietly dispensing radioactive water, there's a link in the article, through the faucets and showers, exposing everyone on board to what would soon become a type of hell on Earth. Uh, if you don't like the S word, uh, skip ahead 10 seconds. People were shitting themselves in the hallway, recalled Cooper, noting that many of the crew members on the ship had been suffering from extreme diarrhea. 
Two weeks after that, my lymph nodes in my neck were swelling. By July, my thyroid shut down. Do you notice that they're letting this trickle out? This is much worse than I had thought it was. And I didn't think it could be worse than I thought it was. The worst part of the situation is that the USS Ronald Reagan, it goes on, had been specifically sent to the Fukushima region to provide aid. But before it could even arrive, it inadvertently traveled directly into the eye of the radioactive storm, leading to at least 70 cases of radiation poisoning and 35 new cases of cancer. Let me pause. Does anybody listening to this believe for a second that the fish that's on the supermarket store somehow is immune or that they don't swim through this water. Yesterday I talked about the, uh, the fish agreement. The fish agreed with the government that they weren't going to swim through it. Unless you believe that, then you can see part of the enormity of this problem. Um, we are seeing leukemia, testicular cancer, and unremitting gynecological bleeding. Uh, I mentioned that yesterday. I am going to read these last few paragraphs, and you are going to be so angry that you could literally chew nails. Fukushima is still spewing the same types of radiation that harmed the Navy crew members. The U.S. government, meanwhile, did nothing to try to help all those desperately ill Navy crew members who were helplessly stranded at sea for months. Wait, Sam, do you mean for months and months and that's, yes, in the poison snow. Our government left them there. Might that be another reason that our government isn't, wasn't testing, didn't have the radiation machines on? Because they didn't want to let it get out, maybe, how bad these people just got juiced. I lost my place, I'm so mad. Did nothing to try to help those desperately ill Navy crew members who were helplessly stranded at sea for months with no ports willing to accept them. Well, thanks, allies. While their ship was eventually allowed to dock in Thailand, the damage had already been done. The most advanced military in the world, and they were just stranded, it says. Who would do such a thing to their own people, asks one angry commenter on E.N. ENENnews.com. I don't know, just Hitler, Stalin, and Obama. Fire each and every naval, uh, naval, Navy officer who had anything to do with perpetuating this monstrosity for two and a half months, as another previously incensed commentator. Last paragraph in this one. As for the current state of Fukushima, reports issued just days after the Navy story broke headlines revealed that mysterious steam is still flowing from Fukushima's Reactor 3. Well, friends, that's the one that experienced an explosion. It blew up. It had a nuclear explosion. Um, it's a nightmare. That's exactly what this is. And it's still billowing all over. Uh, this is InfoWars' Al Adam Salazar, new radioactive hotspots found on Cali Beach. Um, four InfoWars team members, this is dated the 9th, including myself, Mr. Salazar, have embarked on an investigation to the West Coast examining the abnormal radiological readings witnessed in the viral YouTube video. There's a link to it. In the video, which has been seen over half a million times, a man in Half Moon Bay, we covered this yesterday, encounters really high readings. I'm not going to repeat myself, you'll have to see yesterday's show. But it was that. That's what they found on California's beaches. Very, very high radiation. Um, working to relieve concerns that the high radiation levels indicated fallout from Japan's Fukushima Daiichi nuclear power plant had finally reached the United States. Electrical engineer Steve Weiss, a radiological expert who has worked on Gager counters for 40 years, examined the same beach as the man in the video and presented even worse results. There's the word worse comes up every time you have anything to do with Fukushima. Weiss found levels, and there's a link to this, in excess of 1,400% of what acceptable amounts should be. For you Lady Gaga fans, it's deadly. Um, quote, it's not normal. I've never seen 400 CPM when I wave, wave my dagger counter around, Weiss told the review. There has to be something radioactive to do that. Now, 
And there's a reason I'm doing this article, and you'll catch it in a minute. After a spectrum analysis of the dirt on the cove, the paper later discovered that the isotopes to be naturally occurring from rate were rate thorium and radium, and not cesium-137, the visual material employed at the Fukushima reactor. Pause. I want to give a shout out and a thumbs up to Mikhail Thalen. Um, we had talked before his article came out, and I had mentioned this to him, and uh, I'm going to mention it to you. Pause and everything. You're going to read, go ahead and uh, search this if you don't believe me. You're going to read that because radium and thorium were found, that this implies that it's not from Fukushima. You're going to hear that over and over again. Well, I had, sh I had shown this to Mikhail Thaler. This is Ukiah blog, U-K-I-A-H blog, dated August 29th, 2013. That is before the California disaster that we're talking about now with the high 1,400% radiation spike. This is August. Mikhail Block, Fukushima, Alpha Radiation Dangers, Thorium, Polonium, Radon, Radium, Plutonium, Uranium. In other words, Thorium and Radium can very much be from Fukushima. I just gave you the proof, and it's not propaganda. It was published before the California disaster happened, so it can't be propaganda. That is something you won't find anywhere else. Uh, I'm going to go on. This led many to scrap the notion that radiation from the damaged nuclear plant in Japan was the cause of the high readings. We, meaning InfoWars, however, were not convinced and set out on a mission to conduct radiation measurements up and down the coast. I'm going to cut to the chase here. This is what they found. Go to the article for uh, more in-depth. Uh, I'm going to give you, uh, well, there's a whole bunch of them. I'm just going to pick every other one. I don't want anybody to go to sleep on them. Poplar Beach, Half Moon Bay, January 8th. Water's Edge, 28 CPM to 32 CPM. Highest, 58. Golden Gate Bridge, south side, January 8th, near Rocks, 20 CPM to 50 CPM. Creekside Camp and RV Resort, January 8th, 42 CPM to 66 CPM. And lastly, Gills by the Bay Restaurant, King Salmon, California, nice place to eat, right? 30 CPM to 34 CPM. And again, there's other readings on there. I read you half of them. Go look it up. Also, like I said, look up your guys' blog and do not let them tell you that radon, radium and thorium are not from Fukushima. Because if, in fact, they're telling you that, then they are lying to you. Um, let me go on here to uh, Kit Daniels' work. The Pentagon agency admits it began stockpiling potassium iodide due to Fukushima. This might be the only time you ever hear me say this, but the Pentagon did a, did a really good thing here. Um, now, are they only going to give it to the elite? That would be a really bad thing. But what I mean is they ordered it, made sure that it was going to come, and then when everybody and their brother asked if it was because of Fukushima, they said that it is. Well, if you don't acknowledge the things that our leaders do well, then they're going to do even less things well than they do now. So congratulations to the Pentagon for the big perhaps the first time in their history actually telling the truth. Thank you. Um, a federal bid notice reveals that a Pentagon agency began stockpiling potassium iodide in 2012 due to its concerns over the Fukushima nuclear crisis, shedding light on why the Department of Health and Human Services is now ordering 14 million doses of iodine. The Defense Logistics Agency posted a solicitation on Fez Bid Ops, there's a link to it, in 2012 asking contractors for 75,000 packages of potassium iodide tablets because the quote, recent earthquake in Japan of March 11 and the resultant nuclear crisis has renewed interest in this item. It says the U.S. Military Medical Material Agency has submitted a mill strip 
for the item to ensure that critical operational forces are protected in the event of nuclear fallout, the solicitation added. That might mean save the troops, kill the people. I hope that's not what that means. Potassium iodide keeps radioactive iodide from being absorbed into the thyroid gland, and therefore it is commonly taken in the event of a severe nuclear emergency such as a current Fukushima crisis. Uh, let me digress for a second. I'll look up Chris Busby Calcium Fukushima. It's a very good idea to keep your calcium levels high. Uh, women have fun, the men watch out for kidney stones. But if you do that, it will prevent your body from uptaking some of the strontium and things that mimic potassium and calcium that are already in bones. I'm going to go on with the article. As uh, Paul Joseph Watson, PJ Dub, reported on January 1st, HHS ordered an unprecedented 14 million doses of potassium iodide for delivery next month. A government source told Anthony Gucciardi that this purchase is bizarre given the massive amount requested. Um, what's some other important that you must get to in this article? Well, we know about the oceanographers finding so much death at the bottom of the sea floor from Fukushima. Um, yeah, that, that's a pretty much it. The Pentagon has said, hey, we ordered this due to the fact that this could be a problem. And, and let's face it, I, I pointed this out yesterday. I, th I think I'm the only one that's ever connected these dots, and it terrified me when I did. Look up any 40-year period in Japan's history, and you'll find that they've never gone 40 years without an earthquake substantial enough to bring down the wreckage of Unit 4. And yet they're saying that it's going to be 40 years to decommission it. Well, in theory, the only way to get around that is to decommission Unit 4 first. But, again, it's grim, people. It's grim. I got a few more stories to get to, but I want to go ahead real quick and ask you if you've never, if you've ever come to Camp Ohio, I'm going to ask you to go to the Arcadia Grill because when you do, you're going to find they have delicious food. I'm off tomorrow and I have plans to probably go there if you want to meet up, meet me at the Arcadia Grill. Uh, ravioli, here I come. Delicious food. If you're in Canton, Ohio, please go there. And hey, if you're listening to the show and you're near Canton, come on down. I'll do a 151 and cook with you. Uh, lastly, on the uh, important stuff here as we break out, go to TheMediaSpeaks.com, please, and click on Bud K. Uh, when you do, you know, Bud K will know that you found them because of us. And anything you purchase will help the media speaks, help us to grow, help us to get better gear. And you're also going to get good stuff. I ordered stuff for Christmas from Bud K for people on my list. Here's, uh, I'm going to give you three quick things for under $5. Bud K, $2.99, three LED Dynamo hand crank flashlight, uh, how many of you, like me, never change your batteries ever? Well, they are corroded and ruined. Crank it, never buy any more batteries. Perfect for forgetful people. Uh, $1.99 emergency survival sleeping blanket. If you own a piece of junk car, you don't want to freeze to death, and this will prevent you from doing so. Well, the tow truck takes 100 years to get to you. And lastly, um, the compressed towels, 12-pack, $1.99. Perfect for anyone you know that's into survivalists. Uh, Let's face it, we never know what's going to happen. We never predicted a quadruple meltdown. So it always is good to be prepared. Get prepared by going to the mediaspeaks.com and clicking on Bud K. All right, guys, i got four more stories I'm going to get to. Uh, speaking of Mikhail Thalen, he wrote this. Scientists discover conjoined gray whale calves dying near West Coast. Following continued news of disturbing sea life occurrences off the West Coast, Scientists in northern Mexico's Laguna Ojo de Libre, formerly known as Scammon's Lagoon, have discovered what appears to be the first ever documented case of conjoined gray whale calves. It doesn't take a genius to figure out that radiation causes mutations. We've known this for as long as we've known what radiation is practically. But Whales are rather high up the food chain. For us to be seeing this now, and to be seeing cancers in sailors, healthy sailors, work out, box, uh, drink, uh, to see cancers in them in three years is insane. And to see this in whales that quickly, uh, friends, again, like I said, I'm one of those odd nerd people that like heavy metal and also study physics. I'm weird. I've studied this for a very long time, and this is unheard of. Chernobyl did not progress anything like this at this speed. 
Friends, I was alive in 1986. I was in the seventh grade. I watched it happen. This didn't happen. I discovered last Sunday the calves which did not survive, it says, are measured in at just under seven feet long, much smaller than the average newborn length of 12 to 16 feet. Unfortunately, the specimen died. His survival was difficult, a translated comment from the Guerrero Negro Verde Facebook page reads. Shockingly underdeveloped, American Sicilian Society researcher Alyssa Shulman Janiger believes the calves were the result of miscarriage. Later collecting the carcass for further analysis, scientists made no comments regarding the possible cause. You don't bother to test what kinds of radionuclides are in it. Well, why would we want to know if there's radium in something like this or uranium? It's harmless. Just keep eating tuna. While conjoined twins have been found in several other whale species, a search of the database at the Natural History Museum of Los Angeles County by local scientists produced no records of conjoined gray whales. Although no information has yet been released, it goes on, concerns over the ongoing Fukushima disaster has many asking questions, especially in light of the rare animal deaths spreading along the west coast. Uh, friends, go back to my previous uh, Search the Correct News Fukushima. I've reported on seals, walruses, almost all tuna, mussels, octopus, uh, sea stars, uh, plankton. This has this fit new. It's just getting worse at a, at a rate. The Correct Views likes to put things in layman's terms. You and I are going to write a fictional book together. And here's my idea. I got this idea for a story where we're going to have these meltdowns happen. And they're, they're going to cause these mutations in just a couple of years. And my editor would say, no, 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 that's not going to work, Sam. It doesn't happen that fast. Well, no, but I'm going to make it four reactors. And they're going to melt down. And it's going to happen in less than three years. Deformed whales and death in the bottom of the seafloor. The editor would laugh me out of his office, probably after spitting on me, because nobody would ever believe that story, that it could happen that quickly. And yet, here it is. Incidences such as the ongoing melting star epidemic, which has been off coast to California, Oregon, Washington, and Canada, all of the places that I've begged you to evacuate, along with Hawaii since day one, I've begged you, all of you to do that, have yet to be explained as sea stars are found literally disintegrating. Think about what, you know, what their life was like. Even with Japanese scientists finding high CCM levels in plankton throughout the Pacific as far back as May 2013, scientists continue to call the amount safe. And there's tons of uh, links in this. So I go to uh, Mikhail Thalen on InfoWars and see this. There's links for all of this. A recent study published in the Journal Proceedings of the National Academy of Scientists found that a number of dead sea creatures covering the seafloor in the Pacific is higher than has ever been since monitoring began 24 years ago. So, uh, again, you can't say Chernobyl did it. That's, Chernobyl would not be a factor in that time period. Despite attempts by, by some to debunk the study and blame the occurrence on global warming, a closer look of the study points to Fukushima as the most likely factor. Looking to global warming as the reason for sea star death is as stupid as the FBI looking to the insane clown posse as a reason for increased crime activity. Following the death of the Health Department Human Services purchases of Following the Department of Health and Human Services purchase of 14 million doses of potassium iodine last week, which I just covered, many believe that the federal government has begun preparing, and of course they admitted that they did. So we're seeing conjoined whales that died at miscarriage. We're seeing, uh, what was it I said yesterday, 22,000 increased death in the United States after Fukushima. Well, I got a few more. Kit Daniels. Oh, no, I just read that one. Yeah, yeah, yeah I know what I'm doing. All right, uh, here we go. Scientists discovered... Yeah, I know I'm getting a row here. Okay. 
Missouri snow found to contain radiation double the normal amount. That's what happens when you start ticking open your tabs real fast to look up sources. You have no idea where you are. Uh, Paul Joseph Watson, readings taken from snow blanketing St. Louis, Missouri, contains double the normal radiation amount, once again, stoking concerns of ongoing Fukushima crisis and how it's impacting America. And I hear so often that, Sam, it doesn't matter. It's, this isn't, uh, this is a Japanese issue. You're being an alarmist. I even wrote a song with uh, the band Ugly Distance called The Alarmist about this. Uh, you're being an alarmist. It's, it's not as bad as you say it is. And it doesn't affect America. So eat cheese, drink milk, eat tuna, don't take vitamin C and die. Um, it does affect us. Last time I checked, Missouri was still in the Union. The radiation returned from the snow precipitation is returning double the normal background amounts. Normal background in this area is approximately 30 CPM, where it's YouTube user Dutch Sits, S I N S E alongside a video documenting your readings. This means small particles of radioactive material are indeed coming down in the precipitation, it says. Past tests show 30 CPM in the same spot on a nice day with no precipitation, he adds, noting that snowstorms in 2012 also showed alert level readings, radiation readings. And of course, I covered the gentleman in Canada who went all over Canada with his uh, Geiger counter showing what it was doing. This was right after the disaster. As we reported earlier, Geiger counter readings taking on the beach of San Francisco return results five times higher. Well, we've already covered, we've already covered its 14, uh, 1,400 times. Um, it says whether such readings are linked to the ongoing Fukushima crisis is unknown. Um, it, it just seems like such a coincidence that the, the stars aren't related to it. And the Missouri snow isn't related to it. The tainted cheese, uh, the... And the spike in whale, uh, now whale conjoinings, uh, the fact that California raisins are showing uh, radioactivity. This is all just a coincidence, right? The last two stories I want to get to are from Fukushima Diary. Um, I'm going to that part of it in French. High schooler in Kariyama tweeted, having high fever since last year. It was acute leukemia. Um, a male student from Kariyama High School tweeted that they diagnosed that he had acute myelogenous leukemia, uh, M-Y-E-L-O-G-E-N-O-U-S, which only 0.003 to 0.004 of the population have. But yeah, you know, nothing to do with Fukushima. It's all just a, a crazy coincidence. Uh, last thing I want to get to, President, uh, TEPCO President, I didn't even catch a cold last year, thanks to everyone. Staying healthy is most important. TEPCO's president, Harose, talked in the year briefing in 1-6-2014 that he didn't even catch a cold last year. In this statement, he praised TEPCO employees. He showed his appreciation to them and stated that, thankfully, he didn't even catch a cold. He got to confirm that staying healthy, of course, is the most important thing. Like, he cares if you're healthy or not. And, but, you know, you know what? There are a couple stories I am going to get to them. What the hell? Um, this, this, if this doesn't make you disgusted, nothing will. I am going to do these. Um, what else do I got to do at 5 in the morning? Let's do it. Rice grown near crippled Fukushima plants served to government officials. Uh, this is the kind of things. I, the, the last Fukushima article reminded me, and yeah, I am going to cover it. Rice from the fields of Fukushima Prefecture evacuated the worst nuclear disaster in Japan will be served to government officials for nine days in a bid to demonstrate safety of the government's most beloved crop, a local broadcaster reported. First of all, if anybody should eat it, they should. Second of all, this, is, this isn't going to work for, for an obvious reason. Um, even if it takes three years for them to catch cancer, by then they will have already sold everybody. Oh, you know, I saw him. I saw him eat it. He lived. So let's us go buy some. So then your average citizen is going to go and buy rice. And in three years, when these boneheads that ate this rice get cancer, everybody else would have already been eating the rice for three years. 
excuse me, the rice cultivated in several decontaminated fields in Yamakaya district in Kama, Kawamata town in Aite village, I'm so good with foreign language, two areas designated as evacuation zone after the March 2011 nuclear catastrophe will be served in the government office in Tokyo from Monday and eaten by people who are either pretty stupid or both. Over half a ton of rice will be part of a test to prove the effectiveness of the decontamination process. As if you're going to eat and keel over immediately. Officials from Fukushima Prefecture who think that you're stupid have given assurances that the rice contains no radioactive substances. You would have to be a Lady Gaga fan to believe that. The rice balls tasted especially good. That's because radiation doesn't have a taste, you monkey brain. Tasted especially good after the great effort put into cultivating the crop. Yeah, because effort gets rid of radiation. Said Senior Vice Environment Minister Sinje Enu on Monday. He is a moron. Parliament, uh, Parliamentary Vice Air Environment Minister Tokamoto Yukashama also joined in the tasting because he wants to die. A farmer from Kawamata Town told NHK that he will continue to cultivate rice now, just like Hitler continued to kill his own people, just for money. Now that he knows it tastes good. Yeah, who cares if anybody dies, as long as they die tasting good food. Uh, everybody's happy they've eaten good food when they're getting radiation treatment for cancer, and their thyroid is, uh, looks like a rat from a Monsanto experiment. This is disgusting. Because the zone was evacuated after the nuclear crisis, he said that he had traveled from his temporary home to the paddy fields to tend the crops. Some 160,000 people escaped the vicinity of Fukushima, and it goes on to uh, talk. We know they had to evacuate, of course. Several months after the accident at the power plant in November 11th, samples of rice grown in Onami Town in Fukushima Prefecture showed radioactive contamination above the safety limit. The grain contained cesium, a radioactive isotope, obviously, that was measured at 630 becquerels per kilogram, while the government set safety limits at 500 becquerels. Well, there is no safe limit anyway. But uh, do you know what a becquerel is? Uh, in layman's terms, it's a little tiny explosion. A becquerel is an explosion that happens inside your body at a microscopic level, and that explosion continues to occur depending on the isotope forever um, and any explosion that hits another cell can trigger anything from susceptibility to a cold to heart disease to deadly cancer one per second is a becquerel the best way to describe it 630 becquerels what was the rice let's eat some rice it'd be safer to eat the chopsticks the rice from Anami, situated 57 kilometers northwest of the stricken nuclear power plant, was banned and shipments of the product were restricted in 11. They need to be restricted forever. You can never go back there again. What part of that do they not understand? Oh, uh, what's the other one I saw in here that I didn't think I was going to get to, but I absolutely had to? There it is. 